This presentation will address the inflammatory response. The information presented will allow you to answer the question, explain why it is important to understand the inflammatory response when managing soft tissue injuries. What is the inflammatory response? It is the body's natural response to tissue damage. It allows the body to dispose of dead and dying tissue, it allows for the renewal of new tissue, and is characterised by redness, swelling, increased temperature, pain and increased blood supply to the injured area. It is characterised by three phases, acute inflammation, regeneration and remodelling. The stages of healing, specifically in relation to soft tissue injury, include the acute inflammation stage, which lasts for the first 72 hours, the regeneration phase, which begins from about 72 hours and lasts up to six to eight weeks, and the remodeling phase, which begins from six to eight weeks and lasts six to 12 months, which ultimately leads to full healing of the injured area. Phase one, acute inflammation. The acute inflammation stage lasts for three days or 72 hours. It is characterised by five signs, increased heat, redness, swelling or edema, pain and loss of function to the injured area. The vessels supplying the injured area are also affected by vasodilation, which just means the widening of the blood vessels. This occurs to allow for increased blood flow to the area, including white blood cells, to clean up the injured site and remove dead cells. This increased bleeding may last for between four to six hours. As a result of this acute inflammation stage, dead cells from the affected area need to be removed and they are removed via the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system has a very slow circulation. It's not like the circulatory system which has the heart as a pump to pump the blood around the body. The lymphatic system on the other hand does not have a pump to circulate the fluid for this system. So it's very slow and any dead and dying tissue needs to be removed via the lymphatic fluid and that's why compression and elevation as part of the RISA regime can help to remove this lymphatic fluid efficiently and get rid of the dying and dead tissue which ultimately speeds up the healing process. RISA is important at this particular stage of the inflammatory response. RISA controls blood flow, removes excess fluid and controls swelling, also known as edema, and manages pain. And RISA stands for rest, ice compression, elevation and referral. Beginning with rest, an athlete should allow for 72 hours of rest. And this avoids further damage controls bleeding and assists with pain relief. Ice, ice should be applied for 20 minutes every two hours for the first 48 to 72 hours following injury. This ice application reduces pain, reduces bleeding, which leads to vasoconstriction, which just means that the vessels become a little bit smaller and this restricts blood flow. So this also manages swelling. But ice shouldn't be applied directly to the skin. It should be applied either over the top of a compression bandage or with a towel underneath because it can irritate the skin. Ice is often applied using cling wrap and sometimes just applied over the top of a towel. The benefits of using cling wrap is that it actually allows for compression at the same time and that can be very beneficial when you're trying to manage swelling. Compression, again, controls blood flow, reduces bleeding and swelling, but compression is very, very important because it plays a role in helping to recirculate some of the lymphatic fluid which has been generated around the injured site. As mentioned, the lymphatic system has a very poor circulation and the gentle squeezing that is uh, a part of the compression process actually removes the lymphatic fluid away from the injured site and thus moving the dead uh, and dying cells and speeding up recovery. And again, 
compression should last for about 72 hours or three days. Elevation likewise should last for about 72 hours and this slows bleeding and controls swelling but also assists with lymphatic drainage because if you've elevated the injured site then the lymphatic fluid is able to drain with gravity uh, away and those dead and dying cells can re be removed from the injured area. Referral simply means uh, referring onto a professional such as a physiotherapist or a doctor for further diagnosis and ongoing care. You can see in this image the clear difference between uh, an injury that has not used Reister and an injury that has used Reister. You can see on the, on the left hand side a ligament injury. Uh, you can see that the swelling is quite dramatic and there is a lot of inflammation and the resulting scar tissue right down the bottom on the left is quite large. On the right hand side where Reisa has been used you can see that the inflammation is much less and the swelling is much less and the, as a result the scar tissue down the bottom is quite low. So the smaller the scar tissue or the less scar tissue uh, present that just means greater flexibility and range of motion and less likelihood of re-injuring. So you can clearly see that RISA does have a big impact. This table is a good overview of RISA and I encourage you to pause the screen, take a closer look and make a few notes here. Another important acronym to understand for the first 72 hours, so during this acute inflammation stage, is the no harm principle. And that just means no heat, no alcohol, no running, and no massage. Now, heat actually increases bleeding, leads to vasodilation, um, and what that does is it, it just in, encourages uh, more bleeding, and it can slow the healing process down and, and lead to more swelling as well. And alcohol also increases bleeding and swelling, which delays healing. It can also mask pain, which means that someone may have a serious injury, but they may not know it which means they may still continue to train and, and, and do activity on that um, particular injury, which can make it worse. No running, obviously, increased blood flow uh, and may also make the injury worse and slow down healing. And no massage, which also increases heat, which also increases bleeding and swelling and just not good to do within the first 72 hours. That leads us to phase two, which is regeneration. And regeneration begins from 72 hours or three days after the injury and lasts up to six weeks. Now the regeneration phase is characterized by uh, the shrinking uh, blood clot in which debris is also removed from the area. So all of the, the tissue that has been uh, formed to help heal the area through the increased blood flow and so on, the blood clot forms and also has to be removed and so does the dead and dying tissue that's, that is uh, a part of that as well. So that is removed and new fibers then start to form and scar tissue starts to form as well. So this regeneration phase lasting from three days up to six weeks, scar tissue forming, new fibers and debris removed, moving towards remodeling. Now with the remodeling phase, it lasts from about six weeks and can last up to 12 months or more depending on the severity of the injury. Now the remodeling phase is characterized by increased production of scar tissue and replacement of tissue to develop and strengthen the injured area. And you can see in the image in that uh, it shows you the pre-injury, injured and the healed tissue. The scar tissue is very well uh, formed in this phase but the downside of scar tissue is that it is very inflexible and so during this remodeling phase whilst there is a lot of scar tissue it also means that rehabilitation should be occurring during this phase so lots of scar tissue means increased risk of re-injury because of the lack of flexibility and elasticity uh, and also decreased range of motion so it just means that rehabilitation becomes very, very important, particularly progressive mobilization and stretching. Now, remodeling varies due to the extent and degree of mobilization. Uh, excessive exercise too early can lead to further damage and too little exercise can form more scar tissue. So it's a fine 
balancing act that, as I said, requires rehabilitation to help to manage that injury, increase flexibility uh, gradually and ensure that the athlete is ready to return to play without risk. So immediate treatment of soft tissue injuries, that acute inflammation stage, the aim is to reduce swelling and prevent further damage and ease pain. And that is uh, that is um, achieved through the use of RISA. The medium and long-term treatment of soft tissue injuries throughout the regeneration remodeling phase, the aim is to restore flexibility, regain full function, prevent recurrence, and return the player to the field as soon as possible. Now, rehabilitation is important, as mentioned, and basically it ensures that the athlete's uh, normal function is uh, achieved fairly quickly. Uh, and it is achieved through progressive mobilization or slow gradual movements, graduated exercise such as stretching, conditioning, and total body fitness. It can also involve the use of heat and cold to help to stimulate the muscle tissues and encourage blood flow, and also involves training. And training is important because it means that the athlete can gradually return to their sport or event. Now, this critical question is important because it encourages you to relate cause and effect, make relationships between things evident, and provide why and or how. That is the explain verb. So you really need to draw out the impact of understanding the inflammatory response, uh, which, of course, has three phases, which has been covered in this presentation. Uh, and managing, you need to refer to RISA mainly here, rest, ice, compression, elevation, and referral. And with soft tissue injuries, we're referring to sprains, tears, and contusions. Thank you very much for listening.